Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to use a shadow catcher in Modo. I'm using Modo 902 but you should be able to follow along in any other version or any previous version. So first what we need to do is we need to load our plate image or image sequence basically and um, there are two ways to do this so there's a easy way and a difficult way or more difficult way so let me show you the more difficult way and then I'll show you the easy way. So if you go to your shading tree and under environments, you can add it as an environment. So I'm going to delete the default uh, gradient environment just by hitting delete on that one. And uh, with your environment selected, I'm going to click on add layer, go to image map and click on load image uh, to load my background. So I'm going to click on this street JPEG that I just downloaded, click on open. Um, and then all you need to do is you need to make sure that that uh, image that you loaded is underneath this environment folder. So I'm just going to drag that into that folder. Um, and then in the properties of that image, I'm going to go to texture locator here on the side. Um, and then where it says projection type, I'm going to change that to front projection. And um, then you need to select your camera. So projection camera, just going to select camera. And now if we look through our camera here, if I click on perspective, change this to camera, uh, we should be able to see that plate. Okay, so that's kind of the difficult way to, to load a plate. Let me show you the easy way. So I'm going to delete this from my environment again, um, go back to my item list, and then all you need to do is click on your camera. And uh, if you just scroll down here a little bit to background image, just click on there. And if you don't have anything here, just go to add clip and click on load image, browse to your image, select it, click on open and then select it obviously. And there you go, as easy as that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't really matter which uh, way you do this, just load your image. And um, as you can see, I'm just trying to line up my grid very roughly to my image or to my plate. So I'm just gonna do it by eye, something like that should be fine. And then if you're happy with that, if you want to lock your camera, just right click on your camera and then click on lock or unlock. That's going to lock it so you won't be able to rotate this view again. Cool. So I'm just going to go back to my perspective view and um, then I'm going to create a box. So I'm going to click on a normal basic box. Just draw out something like that. Uh, I'm going to make it a bit smaller, about two meters by two by two. And let's just center this on our grid. Um, because it's two meters tall as well, I'm going to set this one meter above the grid. So it's actually sitting um, exactly on top of the grid like that. So let's go back to our camera view. And obviously you can see it's a bit big. So I'm just going to unlock my camera again. And I'm just going to kind of just pull my camera back. Um, cool, that should be fine. So I'm going to lock my camera again. And let's just give this uh, mesh a name. I'm going to call it box okay so now i can obviously go ahead and you can kind of move it around in a scene let's say we want to put it there okay so next we need to create a floor that's going to be our shadow catcher so i'm going to go back to my perspective view and uh, in my item list i'm going to press n to create a new mesh and uh, then i'm just going to draw out another box as the floor plane so i'm just going to draw out oops that's not going to work uh, just going to draw out, make sure we're in the new mesh and draw out the floor. Something like that. Okay, make sure it's nice um, underneath or just underneath the grid or on top of the grid actually. Um, so that's going to be our floor. So let's just give it a name. Floor. And now we can go back to our camera view. Okay, cool. So we can see we've got our floor there. Uh, you can obviously move it around to kind of just cover this area where our shadow is going to fall. Um, and then I'm going to give it a material. So with our floor selected, I'm going to press M for material. And let's just call this floor. Press enter. And now if you go to your shading tree, you should be able to see your floor group or your material group for the floor. Um, and now all we need to basically do is we need to duplicate our base shader and put it inside that group. So I'm going to right click on the base shader and click on duplicate and then move that into our floor material group. You can even give it a name, you can rename it. So I'm going to call it, um, well, let's call it shadow catcher. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to call it shadow catcher. Okay. And um, now all you need to do in the properties of that shadow catcher, I'm just going to kind of scroll down here and where it says alpha type, it's currently on opacity. I'm going to change that 
to shadow catcher and that's basically all you have to do well there's one more thing um, because the shading tree works from the bottom to the top so everything or in anything on top will actually override something below it so that's why we need to take this original base shader and just move it down the tree to anywhere below our new uh, base shader basically okay so let's go to our render tab and let's just click render there and there you can see already we've got a shadow on our floor you can see the cube and it's actually working so now if we go to our light and i'm just going to soften that shadow a bit because it's really really harsh um, so where it says spread angle i'm going to change that to about 15 uh, degrees you'll see that will just soften our shadow a bit so let's say you want to make your shadow a bit less opaque currently you can see it's it's almost completely black um, all you need to do is in your shading tree go to your directional light and click on the light material below that and then you'll see there's a color and also a shadow color and if you click on shadow color you can actually just use this um, gradient between black and white basically white will be completely invisible and uh, black will be completely black or 100% or opaque and if you make it somewhere around here you can kind of see that it's a bit more uh, see-through now because obviously you want to try and match these shadows around it and as you can see in this photo they are almost completely opaque so I'm just going to try and put it maybe somewhere somewhere around there which is pretty pretty dark um, yeah so let's just click on render and see how that looks like and there you go, that's how easy it is to create a shadow catcher in Modo. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick tutorial, give me a thumbs up if you did, and also remember to click on that subscribe button if you want to be notified of new weekly tutorials. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers, bye.